Thank you for coming out. We drove out from Elk Grove, Illinois. Many of you may know that last night, y'all should know, I started a radio show. Here's what a nut I am. I don't know that I even know the website. Uh, well, WIND AM560, do we get it here? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Barely. What Barely. 560 AM. Um, I did? Good. And you can also uh, do it on your computers and your phones and all that stuff. And uh, if you miss a show, you can watch it the next day. But here's what's great. WIND AM 560 knows who I am. And they still hire me. <laughs> they, uh, they said, look, Walsh, what we need, after I lost, um, we need a local Tea Party conservative person with a big mouth who's going to go after everybody. And I said, I'm your guy. <laughs> um, so the nice thing for, I think, everybody in this room, people who think like we do, people who think like... Uh, I believe in freedom and limited government. We got about that much time to save this darn country. Uh, you're going to have a voice, uh, and it's going to be a voice that's going to go after everybody that doesn't believe in the things we believe. I ran for Congress three and a half years ago. I got elected, surprised the world. I went to Washington and went to take no prisoners. Um, I thought before I got elected and went to Washington that I sort of knew how bad things were. Uh, and they're so much worse. When I, when I campaigned, I told people, gosh, and I, I think we got maybe two, three, four elections left. And if we don't get it right, we're going to lose it. I think we got a couple of elections, tops. And if we don't get these elections right, I don't think our kids and our grandkids will ever, ever, ever know the country that we all know. Uh, it's pretty scary stuff. We're at war. The other side knows we're at war. Obama, Pelosi, Reid, Madigan, these guys know we're at war. Our side hasn't really recognized that, what we're starting to. Um, I thought what I'd do is just take a little bit of time and tell you what the heck I'm doing out here. And it's great to be out there. Um, out here. Anytime you physically walk, run, ride your bike, or drive further away from Chicago, it's a good day. <laughs> I mean that. I mean that. <coughs> what, a, what a beautiful state this would be. If we, if, if we could all, I, I was going to say without Chicago, but no, if we could fix Chicago, what a wonderful state Illinois would be. So it's always good to come out into God's country. Here's the deal. Nothing fancy. The country's broke. The next time a politician tells you we're $16 trillion in debt, throw something at them. You know that's not true. Well, we're north of $100 trillion in debt. We don't know what that means. That's so much money. But when you count everything we owe right now, we're north of $100 trillion in debt. What does that mean? That means every man, woman, and child in this country right now owes about $300,000. And it goes up every hour. It goes up every minute. It'll go up a few hundred million by the time I'm done talking. We're broke and we're broken. The country, we, all, we all know this. The country is broken. You're going to hear on my radio show tonight when you listen to it tomorrow. Uh, the real unemployment rate in this country is not 7 or 8 percent. The real unemployment rate in this country is about 15 percent. Because your stupid government doesn't count people who become so discouraged they don't even look for work. Your stupid government doesn't count people who are only working part-time when they can't find full-time work. We don't count those people. 
If you count those people in a few other categories, you're up around 15,000 people. 15% 15 of this country is unemployed. We're not growing. The greatest, most entrepreneurial, risk-taking country ever designed by man and God uh, isn't doing anything. We're not growing. We're not starting businesses. We're not working. Our economy's not growing. We're in bad shape. Now, I'm an Irish Catholic kid. I come from a family of nine kids. I always try to be really happy and smiling. Um, but we're in bad shape. The country's broke and broke. We all know this. How in God's name did we get here? First group of people to blame is easy, our politicians. Republican and Democrat. Republican and Democrat, not a Republican. Born and raised a Republican. Hope to go to my grave as a Republican, though that means. Both parties have done this to us. Politicians have done this to us. I used to be one. I may be one again. But when you're a politician, all you want to do is get reelected. Springfield, D.C., doesn't matter. Your goal in life is to get reelected. And year after year, and election after election, they figured out over a lot of years that the way to get reelected is to get stuff. Promise you things. And they do this every single election. Look at how Obama won last time. Who was surprised on election day? Who was surprised? Shocked. Shocked. Surprise, shock. I mean, not that maybe any of us really were gaga about Mitt Romney, but how many people were surprised Romney lost? I was surprised. The economy, the economy is in miserable shape. That's why I finished last. How many? Oh yeah, I mean, for you. Yeah, but that doesn't matter if you're dead. You're not worried about the economy. And those guys all want to support. And, and there are plenty of them. But for the country to be in such miserable shape, and he's still able to win, he ran. His team ran a masterful campaign. They really targeted three groups of people. Young people, single women, and minorities. And if you look at what Obama did, he spent his whole campaign targeting those people and giving them things. Beautiful! Welfare does amazing things. Beautiful! All the, all the Hispanics in this country. He, during the campaign, he signed two executive orders to legalize millions of illegal immigrants to get their votes. Young people weren't excited about Obama. He had to get them excited. What did he do? I'll take care of your student loans. Got their votes. Single women. How's he going to get their votes? Contraception for life. Big bad guys like Joe Walsh want to take away your right to abortion. And he got the female vote. Obama isn't the only politician who does this. Republicans and Democrats, this is how they've gotten elected. We've trained our politicians that if they give us stuff, they'll get our vote. Look at the mess, the joke that is Illinois, Springfield. Why do we have a pension crisis? Because we played this dance. The public union employees help get Democrats elected. They give them money. Those Democrats turn around. Hold on. The Democrats and Republicans turn around. They sweeten the pension deal. The next election comes along, they help get them elected again, they sweeten the pension deal, and we've been doing this election after election, and now, oh my God, Illinois run out of money. The other thing that our politicians have done is they've separated themselves from us. I ran for Congress, and I said, if you elect me, I believe in this thing called term limits. There's no way on God's green earth I'm serving more than six years. I thought it served more than two. <laughs> but no way! I said, I'm a term limit guy, I'm not serving more than six. I said, this thing called this sweet congressional health care plan that they got, and they all got a great one, I don't want it, I'm not going to touch it. I turned down my pension. Why should they get a pension that we don't get? I slept on the floor of my office and I came home every weekend. Tough on. 
we've created a separate class of being called the political class. They stay there for life. They make life great for them. Have you ever met a politician who came home poorer than when he went? You know my claim to fame is? When I got elected three years ago, maybe you. I was the only one. When I got elected three years ago, I was the poorest member of Congress. When I left three months ago, I was still the poorest member of Congress. They are elites. They've created this whole system for themselves. So they are to blame. The media is to blame. Here's what I think in 20 seconds. The country right now is going through a revolution. Two visions of America, people who believe in what this country is founded upon, freedom and limited government, is having a fight with people who believe in big government. The media, which is always pretended, they're sort of in the middle between these two visions, baloney. They've always sort of hung out over here. After Obama got elected, they built a house over here. They live over here. The media in this country pushes the government. Now, Rush Limbaugh says, as only Rush can say, we got a lot of low information voters in this country. That's right. Actually, he's more diplomatic than I am. I said two weeks ago at a town hall, and the media picked it up, I think we've grown stupid. I think the American people have grown lazy, the American people have gotten uninformed, ill-informed, uneducated, lazy, and yeah, we have too many of us that are just plain stupid. We don't pay attention. Thomas Jefferson said, this thing we built, it's like a pact. Politicians got to do right. What's the one thing that we have to do to make this republic work? You've got to pay attention and, pay and stay informed. We're not doing it anymore. We're not doing it anymore. The media takes advantage of people like that. So the election is not about the unemployment rate. It's about the war on women. It's not about the economy. It's about all these other issues. Because people are easily moved. And that leads me to the final group of people that's responsible for the mess we're in, and that's us. I get so tired of people who blame our politicians. They are what they are. Who in God's name sent them to D.C.? Who sent them to Springfield? We did. Not you in this room, but we did. You get the government you deserve. And as a country right now, young and older, we've got the government we deserve. We have fallen asleep on the job. We've abandoned, I think, our responsibility in a democracy to stay informed. We've been asleep for years. How in God's name did it get to the point that we're broke? That we have a government we can't afford? That we have a government that does too much for too many people? You're just going to blame the politicians for this? We kept electing them. If politicians get elected because they give us stuff, we train them to do that. Politicians are like seals. We train them to give us stuff, and if they give us stuff, they'll get our vote. Well, who's been, give, who's been giving them their votes? <clears throat> it, it makes us all feel good to blame politicians. It's a lot of fun to blame the media, and I'm going to rip the media every single day on my radio show. Because they deserve a lot of blame. What time did you show air? Seven to nine every night. I'll give you the details before I leave. But folks, we ain't doing a thing about fixing this thing unless the American people turn it around. Your politicians will follow. So we're we're in we're in deep, deep trouble. <laughs> it's all of our fault. Scary point number three, we don't have a lot of time. We really don't. Say Cyprus. Say Cyprus out loud. Say Europe. <coughs> we don't have a lot of time. When a government 
year after year after year after year after year lives beyond its means, eventually a government is going to collapse. Illinois, Illinois, Illinois has probably already collapsed. We just don't know it yet. The country's right behind it. Tom Coburn, a United States Senator from Oklahoma, wrote a great, great book called The Death Bomb. He could be off by a year or two, but Tom Colbert said in about eight years, your government will only have enough money to physically do three things. Take care of the Social Security obligations, take care of the Medicare obligations, and pay its interest on its debt. That is it. Or uh, print more money. Oh, and print more money. <laughs> that is it. But eventually, eventually they won't even be able to do that. No defense. No securing the borders. No all these other things that even people like us who don't want our government doing a lot of stuff, there won't be government to do anything. Medicare. This program we love and revere called Medicare. Folks, it's gone. Within 10 years, it's gone. Unless we reform it. That's just one government program. Republicans and Democrats all know this. Knuckleheads like Dick Durbin just don't say it out loud. But he knows this. We don't have a lot of time. People ask me all the time, Joe, why do you get so wound up and so excited? Why do you get so angry sometimes? I think we're at war. I love this country. I believe, naively, that this country was founded upon one simple word that young people today don't understand. Freedom. Such a beautiful thing. Our, our founders gave us a country that said, you are free. That thing called government can only do a few little things. You're born with God-given rights. I am born with God-given rights. Most young people too many Americans think these rights come from government. They're there to protect us from government. Most Republicans and Democrats don't understand this anymore. I'm born free. And I'm born responsible for my own life. The beauty. I make a dollar at the beginning of this country. You make a dollar, that's your money. Our founders believed in a little bit of government to do a few basic things, so they're only taking, say, nine cents of that dollar. You keep 91 cents, and then you are free to live your life, and you're responsible for your own life. As your parents get old, you take care of them. When your neighbor down the street loses his job, the neighborhood takes care of them. You go out and shop for your own health care. And we have a little bit of government that takes care of those who simply can't take care of themselves. Fast forward a couple hundred years, we now live in an America where that dollar you make, it's not your money. And I serve with enough Democrats and too many Republicans who don't think it's your money. And if they thought it was your money, why would they keep taking more and more of it every year? So now you live in an America where that dollar you make, you don't get to keep half of it anymore. Think about that for a minute. I think Mitt Romney could have won if that's all he did was get outraged about that. I don't care how wealthy you are. I don't care what you are. Every American should keep at least half of what they make. We live in a country now where you don't get to keep half of what you make. You turn it all over to big government. And now big government does everything. And so now when your neighbor loses his job, what happens to your neighbor? He's on unemployment insurance forever. As your parents get old, what do we do? We push them off on the government-run health care. Government in this new America has replaced our families, our churches, our communities, our neighborhoods, and ourselves. And so is it any surprise that we aren't as involved in our churches as prior generations are? Is it any surprise that our family structures have broken down? Is it any surprise that we're not as involved in our communities as prior generations used to be? No, it's not a surprise. 
Government's replaced it all. Republicans and Democrats have moved us over here. And so these two Americas are having at it. Thank God for the Tea Party movement. The Tea Party movement woke this country up four years ago and said, wait a minute. This isn't, this isn't what this country was founded upon. Doggone you Republicans and Democrats, what have you done? Look, I love to rip Barack Obama because he had no business getting elected. You talk about somebody who was never ready to be president, but he didn't create this mess. Come on, be honest. Okay, so Barack Obama gets elected in 2008. What does he do? He takes his football and he runs over here to big government, right? And every day and every week and every month, he's making government bigger. But answer me a question. If John McCain had gotten elected in 2008, where's he going? He's going the same way. He's just not going to run as fast because he's too old. <laughs> but he's going in the same direction. George W. Bush started the bailouts. George W. Bush ran four to five hundred. This almost sounds like the good old days. George W. Bush ran four to five hundred billion dollar deficits every year. Republicans and Democrats both want to get elected. Democrats run faster over here. Now, Ferris Hill, you got these two of them about to stop, and then I'll take some questions, because you're getting tired of me, aren't you? You're getting tired of me. You're getting tired of me doing this. This is, I only, this is a habit of mine. So you got these two Americas fighting, right? The America that believes in freedom and limited government is finally, Ulysses, finally engaged. And they're fighting with the big government dependency in America. Every Democrat is here. Every Democrat I met is here. They believe in big government. I'm asked all the time, do they just not get it? Do they just not understand that we can't afford this big America? Do they just not understand, even the young people, that if you keep asking government to do more, when the 24-year-olds of today are 44, every dollar they make is going to go to taxes to support this? Don't they get it? A lot of Democrats don't get it. A lot of Democrats don't care. And a lot of Democrats just think, if we put everybody on government, we'll just tax everybody. What's sad for us, too many Republicans are here. Most Republicans are still here. The way I'm talking to you right now, take a guess. When I got elected, there were 232 Republicans in Congress. How many do you think felt like I felt? 30. Quick. A little more than three. About 20. About 20. And, 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 and uh, in last November, we elected a few more. But we're losing. For those of you in this room who believe in and worship what this country was founded upon, hear me well. We are losing. They are like so brilliant at how focused they are. This is the way Obama and Democrats think. Every day, I'm going to put one more person over here. I'm going to get one more group of people and make them dependent upon government. Now, I don't mean to offend people, but I do a lot. Because time's short and we're losing. And I love this country, and I think in a blink of an eye, it's going to be gone. But when LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, our president in the 60s, when he enacted the Great Society, the War on Poverty, when he basically put every African American and inner city, low income American, made them dependent upon government, you know what he said to his advisors? And I'll give you the cleaned up version. He said, those African Americans are going to vote for us for the next 200 years. And he didn't use the word African Americans. They know exactly what they're doing. We're losing. And how sad. I'll close with this. The worst
worst part of this new America that we're all living in, and we've been living in for a long, long time, this isn't the worst part about it. We can't afford this new America. We will crash. We will run out of money. There will come a point where we cannot borrow any more money. There will come a point where we can't print any more money. We will crash. You know it. <laughs> Families cannot live this way. Can you imagine every single year of your life, your annual credit card debt is like three to four times what your salary is. Every single year. We can't live like this. But the saddest part about this new America we live in is this thing called government has absolutely, fundamentally replaced all the other institutions that we believe in. Churches, communities, neighborhoods, families, and individuals. Before all this black, before all this big government, black families stay together. All of our families stay together. Not anymore. We're losing. We better turn it around pretty quickly. Final point, I don't think our politicians will turn it around unless we untrain them. We've trained them for years to give us stuff. That's an old pen. I got a new one for you. No, that's great. Who needs a new phone? Uh, I'll, I'll buy everybody a drink after this meeting. <laughs> this is what our politicians do, and we as a people have been only too willing. Oh, yeah. Do you know when we started Medicare and Medicaid? Think about the, oh, okay, two scary ones, and then I promise I'm done. <laughs> Medicaid! 1960s, Medicaid, is supposed to be the health care system for the poorest of the poor. Remember? The absolute need. Like everything government's done, it's grown. So now in Illinois, one in five people in Illinois are on Medicaid. Oh, don't say, uh-oh, yeah. Unless we get rid of Obamacare, within three years, it'll be one in three. How'd that happen? Medicare! Medicare! To take care of needy seniors when they retire. Like everything else government does has grown. So now every retired person's on it. How did this happen? Did our politicians just do this to us? No. How many of us questioned this? We're in a lot of trouble. Um, and as I look at this room, I, everybody's like in their 30s and early 40s. <laughs> we laugh, um, as we should, because very few of us are in our 30s and early 40s. But you know, every great civilization historically lasts how long? 200, 300 years. I'll close with this. Maybe we've reached a point. He's a friend, but this will be untaken. I'll get attacked for it. <laughs> Maybe we've reached a point where we've already tipped. I'll end with a story. <laughs> I'm glad I said a week up. So I'm running for Congress the first time. Um, and I'm doing a town hall like this. I wasn't quite this late. And I'm at the end of the town hall, a group of about 60 people, and I see a very short, elderly woman begin to walk toward me. And as she's about as far out as that bar, I can see that she's crying. And as she gets close to me, she is sobbing. She has tears streaming down her cheeks. And she comes right up to me, but yay hi. Um, I wasn't a congressman yet. And she, so she said, Mr. Walsh, and she's crying, and she takes her finger, and she puts it right in my chest, and she's doing this.
crying. And she's about this tall. And she says, Mr. Walsh, I figured it out. And she's bawling. The problem with this country is there are too many people in the wagon and not enough people to pull the wagon. And I grabbed her finger. I stopped because it was starting to hurt. <laughs> I reached down and I kissed the top of her head. And I said, you nailed it. We are raising generations of people that want to be in that wagon. And Illinois has reached a point where there ain't nobody to pull the wagon anymore. There ain't no wheels on the wagon. There ain't no wheels on the wagon. Every nine and a half minutes, every nine and a half minutes, somebody leaves this great state permanently. A taxpayer, a maker, a producer, a business owner. Every nine and a half minutes, somebody leaves Illinois never come back. The people leave in Illinois, oh, we're all in line. The people living in Illinois, leaving Illinois are not the people in the wagon. They're the people pulling the wagon. If we don't stop this, Illinois is going to stop. Because there's nobody to pull.